Okay, this morning, um, I'm not sure how much Mike is going to share. This may be a several week teaching, and it's something he's sat on for nine, ten nine, weeks nine at weeks. least, <laughs> at least. And I just, I just felt like this morning when I was um, coming into town and stuff, like I said, I don't know how deep he's going to go into. Some of us, even if he gives everything, some of us will just hear just a light up here. Others will go deeper. Others will go deeper, you know, and then through the years. But what I felt like God was saying is, you know, not to worry about it, not to judge it, not to think, you know. The thing is, is he, he was telling me that a lot of this stuff People on the internet will get this. Have you ever listened to a teaching that's a few years old? You know, you turn on YouTube, and it's a few years old, and yet it just ministers to you right then. That's what he was saying. As you know, Mike is a plowman. He goes ahead. He, he pushes. He does things. He digs. He, he brings. He seeds the heavenly things for us. Sometimes in this body, we don't get it for a few years, literally years before you get the understanding of what we've been trying to teach. You, you hear it, you're like, oh, yeah, uh, amen, oh, God spoke to me. But you're not getting it for years. You see what I'm saying? We don't really walk in it. So I just wanted to encourage people. That's what I felt like is not only him, that it's going to be for some people years before they really hear what is being said. And I'm not sure, like I said, how how much he will give out this time, how much we can take. A lot of it is what can we receive and not, mm -mm. you see what I'm saying? So, and a lot of the songs we were set up this morning. Remember, Adonai means Lord, Master. We give him our life. Just during praise and worship, um, I was I just felt and I was praying um, for your teaching today. I just feel like there's something very special and that I was praying that we would not have the understanding, just human understanding, but that we would understand by the spirit. And just like what you said, that he, you're a plowman. And a lot of times it looks way different than what it ends up being. It's like a plowman, you plow the, the field and, and, the, and the dirt and you put the seed in and it doesn't look anything like what's actually going to grow later on. Mm -hmm. And it's, I just had that feeling too that we need to really have ears of the spirit, hearts of the spirit to really hear what you're saying and not get all like defensive or whatever I have no idea what you're going to talk about but it's that thing of where we're open and it it doesn't look like sometimes what we think it's going to look like or what I don't know it's just one of those things where it's like we just trust God just trusting God and trusting you that God is speaking through you so we just receive it right now in the name of Jesus. God, we choose to listen and hear by the Spirit of the Lord. God, we want to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through Pastor Mike. And God, we just, we lay down our preconceived ideas. We lay down the things that we think we know. And God, we say we're teachable. Adonai, you are our master. Come and teach us by your Spirit. Amen. Amen. You lost it? So you want to? Okay. Um, of course, as we've already discussed, it's been, you know, a couple of months since I've been up here. And uh, I had an opportunity when we were gone to, again, observe, you know, a different, a different church and different church people. And, and uh, as we were speaking with uh, Pastor Allen, uh, Kathy and I were asking about different people and that weren't there anymore. And we said, well, what happened to this person? Well, they got offended and they started to work over here. Well, what happened to this person? They were, last we knew they were going to go to, I think, on a mission trip or something like that. Well, they got offended and now they're starting to do this over here. And, you know, every time we go there, we hear about people that get offended. 
And so I just began to ask God, since I had some time off, and a lot of time off, why is it that we get offended so easily? I said, God, it doesn't make sense. I mean, we can say, well, the devil attacks us more, but it, it looks like we're just get offended and have outbursts of wrath and, you know, uh, lusts and all the works of the flesh as much as the world does. And I said, God, that doesn't make sense. You, you know, you're supposed to have a people that is supposed to defeat these things, and yet we go off the, off the wagon with anything. I mean, somebody says something, somebody looks the wrong way, somebody, you know, exposes something trying to help, and I says, people get offended, and I said, well, what's wrong? And this is what I believe that he showed me. And, you know, when you get nine weeks piled up in you, it's hard to put it in the right order. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've got so much, at least it feels like so much, and I want to try to put it in an order that will make it easier for people to understand. You know, so I have to yield. I know the Holy Spirit wants to do that. So I have to try to yield to him to put it in order. But, you know, your flesh fights. It wants to go its own way. It wants to reveal things that maybe should be later in the teaching. So I'm going to try to yield to the Holy Spirit so that it makes it easier for people to understand. And uh, I just began to ask God, why is this? And he began to, this is what I believe that he revealed to me is that the message that we have in the body of Christ is a message of God directing, uh, navigating our life in this life. If you listen to most teachings that are given today, most of what's being taught is to help us navigate through this life. And in that message, there's a virus you know what a virus is in a computer? I've discussed some of this Wednesday night. You know what a virus is in a computer? How much of, the, how much of your computer does a virus affect? All of, All of it. And there's a virus within that message, and, and we're not aware of the virus. Just like when you click on your computer, you click on a message or something, many t you're not aware that it has a worm or a, uh, what do they call them, a... a, a a Trojan, a Trojan horse, or whatever, or a virus, or some you're not aware that it's in there. So you're clicking on something that you think is perfectly okay. Many times it's disguised as something that you know, somebody that you know, we discussed that. Wednesday night, somebody that you know, and when you click on that and you listen to it, there's a virus embedded in that message. And, and when we, and all, almost, not all messages, but almost all messages, and many songs are all geared towards God navigating our life in this life. Now, I want to say something. God does navigate it. I'm not taken away from that. But when that becomes the main message, you pick up that virus. And that virus is, it's all about me. It creates a selfishness in me, all about me. And that's why we fly off the handle. That's why the works of the flesh are so dominant in the church is because there's a virus in that. Paul and Jesus use the word leaven. But there's a virus in that message. I mean, even the message of righteousness is always so that God will help you make decisions of the affairs of this life. Do you know what I mean by that? The affairs of this life? In other words, uh, take, for instance, a financial decision. If you're spending more time seeking God for a financial decision than you are for the righteousness of this Bible, you're already in Babylon. You've already fallen. The virus has already infected you. Does God want to help you in your financial situation? Absolutely. But you know what? When I read my Bible, that's supposed to be added unto me. I'm not supposed to have to be fighting and doing warfare for a financial decision. According to Scripture, if I seek the, the rule of God and His righteousness first, that's supposed to be added unto me. I shouldn't have to be doing warfare for healing. That's supposed to be added unto me. If we're seeking God more for these things, what? Which shows that you aren't seeking Him. Yeah, which shows that we aren't seeking Him first. I'm, I'm leading up to something because, well, I might as well say it now since, <laughs> since you brought it up. See, one of the things I heard when we were gone was a message on the whole armor of God, right? 
You know, what the, you know the scripture, right? You put on the whole armor of God. You know, the, 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 the breastplate of truth, I think it is, the, uh, the righteousness, whatever it is, the helmet of is salvation, the, the, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, you know, and the sword of the spirit. You, we, we heard all of that, and then come to the end of it, you know, they gave all the definitions and oh, what it would mean and everything, and, and it all came down to be it about COVID. Can we use the whole armor of God to defeat COVID? Absolutely, but that was never the context of that scripture. We need to preach the context or what were they, what was Paul writing when he wrote about the whole armor of God? He was, those people were fighting for righteousness. They were fighting to put off anger. They were fighting to put off being offended. That's what it, that's the original context. Of, we can use it for, for COVID. I'm not against that, but we take everything in this Bible that was meant to fight for righteousness and we turn it into a navigation concept to help us get through this life. And when you do that, there's a virus embedded in that message that makes it all about us. We say it's not about us, we say it's about him, we sing it's about him, but it ends up getting in you and you don't even know it and it affects your whole life. I'm not against God navigating your life. But that was never the primary purpose of this Bible. It was to fight for righteousness. Paul made this statement. He made it in uh, Timothy. I'm going to read it. First, no, 2 Timothy, chapter 4. I mean, think about it, folks. I'm, let me tell you, let me say this. One of the things we heard, and I've heard this many times preached over the years, is, and this scripture was quoted at the end of the service, one of the end of the services, no evil shall befall you or plague shall come near you. And everybody amens. And I'm thinking, uh, as I look across uh, our body and other bodies, every evil is befalling us and every plague is coming near us. So are we just going to psycho babble and keep saying that while we keep dying and keep having plagues come near us and evil befalling us? There's a condition on that scripture, and that's being in the secret place of the Most High. They didn't read it. So we're obviously not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. So that's why I begin to ask God, you know, God, you've got these wonderful promises in here, and yet none of them seem to come to pass. We just keep quoting the promises, but we keep preaching a message not about righteousness, not about going after, I'll, I'll explain it here in a little bit. Not, uh, 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 you know, having a financial decision, that would be righteousness, wouldn't it? But that has to do with this life. Now, let me read this first. We in 2 Timothy, I'm not. I gotta find it. I'm still in Corinthians. Oh, here it is. Verse uh, 16. This is Paul speaking. He says, At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me or abandoned me. Do you think he had an opportunity to be offended there? Why wasn't he? Why wasn't he? Why was he not offended? Think about this. He's on trial for his life. Somebody didn't say, I disagree with you, or somebody didn't take his tambourine, or somebody didn't take his flag, or somebody didn't do something. Look, you laugh, but there's people that get really bent out of shape about that. If somebody didn't you know, decide to change the order of the music, He's on trial for his life. And, and all those people that said, hey, we're with you, Paul. You're it. You got the man. You got the message. You're preaching the truth. They all abandoned him. Now, what would our natural reaction be? <laughs> on you. I'm going somewhere else. But what does Paul say? He said, charge it. Do not charge them. Where did he get that attitude? That took the whole armor of God. Yes. Because for him, look, look, for him to have that attitude, 
He's not after it. You know, when you and I are looking for a financial decision, we're looking for a financial decision to benefit our life in this system. In other words, when you're seeking God for a new car, you, let's say you, you need a new car, right? So you're going to ask God for a new car. That new car is the prize. What prize did Paul get for, not charging, for asking not to charge him with that sin? What prize did Paul get for not being offended? In this life. He, you give honor to God's name, but where is the materialistic blessing that you get for not being offended? It was sure it was spiritual, but you say it's spiritual, but can you put your finger on that? Can you tell me what, what reward are you going to get for that? Give me, a, give me a, something that I can materialize with the, in this life. What kind of reward are you going to get for not getting offended? You don't know. Because it's the unseen realm. And so people will fight and do warfare for those types of things. We'll do warfare against COVID like crazy. But we won't do warfare to not be offended. Stephen's getting stoned to death. What does he say? What are his last words? Lay not this sin to their charge. That took the whole armor of God. It was a Paul and Silas that were in prison in the stocks. What are they doing? Singing praises to God. They're angry and offended at God for letting them get in that situation, right? What are they doing? How, wh- how could they do that? How could they do that when we get offended at every little th- stinking little thing? They're in prison in the stocks. They weren't even trying to get out. Yeah, even when the doors flung open, they didn't go out. What caused them? They had to have the whole armor of God. John and Peter are beaten for the name of Jesus. And they come out doing what? Rejoicing. Get them, God, get them. Rejoicing they, were counted worthy. they were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer such things for the name of Jesus. That took the whole armor of God. Yes. They weren't trying to buy a new car. Oh, let me, let me put it in there. They weren't, they weren't trying to decide what camel to buy. What business decision to make. They were fighting for righteousness. Now, making the right decision, that's a part of righteousness. Getting the right car, that's a part of righteousness. But when we've crossed over and we're fighting more for the materialistic things than we are for these, these, uh, what do you, these spiritual things, these soulish things, we've already crossed over into Babylon. And if you listen, if you listen to most messages, it's all about how God will direct and navigate your life in this system. God wants to end this system and bring a new system. Have you ever heard of this? Hope you don't get mad at me now. We're going to win our, we want to win our city. Forget it, you're not going to win your city. You're not going to win your city unless you disagree with Scripture. Because what did Jesus say? Where do most people go? Most people go, what? Broad is the gate. Wide, Wide is the gate. And broad is the way that what? Leads to destruction. Narrow is the gate. Difficult is the way which leads to life. Jesus said that. Not me. Jesus said that. So that tells me that the majority of the people are going to go the way of destruction. Now, how are you going to win your city? Oh, yeah, but in 1909, the spirit poured out on such and so England, and the whole city and the bars closed down. That was an experience. This Bible wants to produce a remaining fruit. Where are those cities now? It's like World War I. World War I was supposed to be the war that ended all wars. How'd that work out? How did that work out? Yeah. 
Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. If you're after this city, this city will take a back seat. If you're trying to win your city, this one will take a back seat. If you're using God to navigate your lifestyle in the natural, this city will take a back, back seat. You cannot serve two masters. And that's something I was trying to bring up Wednesday night is that you and I, each of us here has jobs. I know you guys have a, a business of your own. Everybody here goes to jobs. You cannot serve that. If you serve that, this city will take a back seat. You can't serve two men. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. Paul said you can't eat from two tables. Same principle. Can you have a business? Absolutely. But if it runs, if you're spending more time praying for that than you are for the righteousness and the city of God, guess what takes a back seat? Sports. If you're a, if you're a professional football player, if you're in politics, what is it that you're serving? Now, you can be in these things, but what are you serving? In other words, where does your heart lie? Where do your emotions lie? Where does your hunger and your thirst lie? Does your hunger and thirst lie to try to fix this system? Then this one will take a back seat. It'll take a back seat. It'll still be there. Jesus said, you'll love one, you'll despise, which means think light. It doesn't mean it disappears. It just takes a bit. It's, it's thought lightly of. See, Paul writes this, and he says, no one engaged in what? Warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life. See, we want God to navigate the affairs of this life. That's where the virus is. We want, we're using God to navigate the affairs of this life. That's the message. The message is to, to try to navigate this life instead of end this life. We want to end this system. We want to end it. That's the, the church is the vehicle by which God has chosen to end this present evil age. But if you're just using God to navigate through the entanglement of these, the things of this life, you're already in Babylon. And that's why we're suffering her plagues. That's why we're suffering her plagues. Because we're using God to navigate through life. Again, does he help us? Absolutely. But if you look at most of the navigation in here, it was to keep people from being killed from persecution. Paul's not spending a whole lot of time with his tent making business asking God, you know, what should, you, should I you make this tent or should I make this tent? And he does not write and hold epistles about it. They're fighting for righteousness. And that's what, and if you got a, I know you guys got a business. And that's fine. Obviously, we have to go to work. We have to, we have to live in this system, don't we? But we do not want to serve it. If you're trying to win that city out there, this one will take a back seat. Because that's, where, if, 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 that's why people who engage in ministry. You ever seen people that ministry is the first choice? Then this city takes a back seat. There's a virus hidden in that message, and it makes it all about us. And that's why we fly off the handle at any little thing that interferes with us. And that's why these guys didn't. Because they were looking at the unseen realm. Turn with me to Hebrews. All of these, most of these scriptures I've, I've hit before over and over again. It's just that I, I began to ask God why. I, I don't understand why we, we're so sensitive to things. Well, Kathy says immature, that's right. Why haven't we grown up? We've been in this a long time. What is going on? And what I, this is what I believe God revealed, is that virus that's hidden in the message that we listen to. Just listen to it, and you'll hear. It's always about how God's going to use you. 
How's he going to bless you? How he's going to bless your family? How he's going to financially bless you? I mean, even the, when you hear an, offer, an offering teaching, what is it usually about? Is it ever deny yourself and give to him because he's worthy? No, never hear that. It's always he's going to navigate your finances for you. Always. And like I said, yeah, I'm not saying that's not true. I'm just saying that's the message, that, that's what it has become. But that was never the intent of why Jesus came. Didn't, Jesus didn't come just so he could navigate your life through this system and make it better for you and make, have you make the right decisions. Does he want you to make the right decisions? Absolutely. You know what he came to do? He came to change who you were. Are you in Hebrews? 11. I'm going to read. You can take any of these scriptures before what I read. We're talking about Noah and Abel and Enoch. But I, want, I think I can make my illustration better with verse 8 but with Abraham. Since he's called the father of the faith and since he's the one that most of us, most ministries and most churches talk about. It says, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. And I just want to stop right there. See, You see, when I don't yield to offense, when somebody says something that can offends me and I don't yield to it, what am I doing? I'm doing a spiritual representation of what we just read. Because I'm leaving what is familiar to me. I'm leaving my getting offended. That's familiar. My flesh likes that. See, uh, Abraham liked where he was living. He left his family. He left his homeland. And what am I doing? I'm going to a place that I've never been. And I can't see. That's a promised land. But that, that, see, this is why it's by faith. And Jesus comes and he says, Will he really find faith on the earth? I don't think that we have got faith yet. We have, we have faith for him to direct our finances sometimes and our cars and our uh, uh, decisions in, in health and things like that. But when it comes to... Uh, i got to read this now. <laughs> uh, Galatians. I'm losing my voice. I mean, I got rookie voice now after being gone nine weeks. <laughs> it's terrible. <clears throat> Chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are. Now listen to these things. This is what fighting for righteousness is. Is This is what we want to do away with. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, uh, envy, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and like, of which I tell you before, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And don't fool yourself into thinking that we don't practice those things. Because if you yield to those things every time your button is pushed, it doesn't matter if you know they're wrong, and it really doesn't make any difference if you come back later. I mean, it does. I'm, I shouldn't say it make any difference. It, it's, it's good if you come back and ask for forgiveness, but if you keep practicing those things, you won't enter into the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter what you sing or what you say or what you pray or how much you confess the word. If you practice those things, and practice means that when your button is pushed, you yield to it. And you see, every time you don't yield to those things, you're going to a place you don't know where you're going. That's where faith really comes in. You really want to find somebody with faith, find somebody who when nobody stands with them says, lay not this charge to them. You want to find somebody with faith, find somebody who's being stoned and say, lay not this sin to their charge. 
You want to find somebody with faith, find somebody who's in prison and in the stocks and singing songs, and when the doors fly open, they stay there. That when they're beaten for the name of Christ, they don't get offended, they don't threaten, they don't revile. They're joyful about it. That's where faith is. Listen, it's good that God directs our lives. I'm, not, I'm certainly not against that. Oh, come on. You, don't hear what I'm not saying. But that's supposed to be added unto me when I seek for righteousness. Look, I'm looking for a people that can... That, w- w- Paul says to Peter, he withstood him to his face and called him a hypocrite. So what did Peter do? What did Peter do? Well, I've never had anything to do with him again. Now I'm going to write all my epistles about Paul, about how terrible he is and how he offended me. And, oh, he's off on the deep end and he's not of God and blah, 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 blah. Is that what he did? He yielded. See, that's what God, that's what God wants to raise up. And as long, you better have your virus protection on, folks. You know, computers got a virus protection. How many of you got that on your computer? You better have your virus protection on because if you listen, it's there. It's embedded in there. It's not the virus. I'm talking about the message. Listen to how it's preached, and it's always about how God is going to direct our lives in this system. How many messages do you hear about trying to bring this city in right now? It's kind of tragic because, you know, if you look at most evangelical denomination, not all but most, you know, they have this concept that God is there to, uh, you know, we accept Jesus so we can go to heaven. And then it's case or all, whatever God's will is. If we get sick, if we die, that's God's will. If, you know, your family's a disaster, that's God's will. If, you know, um, and that, that's what's being preached in there. We took it a step further. We believed in the goodness of God. We believe that God didn't want sickness. We believe that he wants, has a destiny and a call for our lives, a good destiny and a good call for our lives. The problem is, is we got, we got suckered into, into taking that and turning it and mixing it with man, and it became 666. It became our focus. And that's why there's a whole chapter written at the end of the Bible about that. You cannot fix this system. If you read the Bible, this system burns. This system gets overthrown by another system. So if you're focused on fixing this system then this city will take a back seat. We're bringing in a whole new system. That's what the scripture says. Behold, there's a, this is what John saw. I saw a new what? And a new what? And a new earth? Oh, John didn't say, I saw a fixed heaven and a fixed earth? No, he saw a new heaven and a new earth. And this city burns. And the merchants of the earth weep at her burning. And this city gets overthrown. Babylon. What's it get overthrown by? What's it get overthrown by? It gets gets overthrown by another city that you and I have been called to bring in. That has to be our focus. And when we said, you know, the Bible says this. It says, whoever loves God's law shall by no means be offended. There must be a lot of people who don't love God's law because there's an awful lot of offended people. Why? Because when you have your mind set upon high... Well, let's finish this scripture here in, in uh, Galatians. <clears throat> I told you, I told you <clears throat> oh, revelries and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, great scripture, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, uh, self-control. Against such there is no law. Listen to this. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. You know, there must not be a lot of people who are Christ's either because I don't see a lot of this being crucified. How 
How do we crucify the flesh and its passions? We practice the things of the Spirit. Now, what does that mean? You walk in those things, but this is what Paul writes in Corinthians. He says, set your mind on what? Things above. See, that's what Abraham did. When Abraham left his familiar surroundings and went to some place that he didn't know, he was setting his mind on something above because all he could do was trust God. What, what tangibly is he going to put on this that he, that he can see a reward? Only the trust of what God had told him. That was it. This is why Esau failed. Why did Esau fail? Because Esau bold. <laughs> Why trust God in my inheritance that I can't see when I've got a bowl of stew here that I can? That's the comparison that we're making. My offense is my bowl of stool. A uh, stool. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually true. That probably was not a slip of the tongue. That was probably the God. That's my bowl of stew is my being offended because I've got it right there. This will satisfy my flesh now. Because I don't know this other thing. I don't know where it's going. So how much faith is really on the earth? Listen, I know we want to believe for healing and we want to believe for financial decisions and, and for God to direct our lives and sometimes we guess right and sometimes we don't, right? How many of you ever made decisions you thought was God and wasn't? Yeah. I'm talking about just in this system that we live in for the materialistic things. But where you really find out where faith is is when you find out somebody that can put all of these things under their feet and start to walk in these things. And until we change that paradigm, the church is still going to be offended, angry, contentious, jealous, competitive, you name it, fearful, you know, yeah, sucking their thumb. Until you recognize this system can't be fixed. And God never came just to help you through this system so that you have a better life or so that, so that you can make better decisions. He came to end this system and you're the vehicle by which he wants to do it. That's why Jesus never messed with any government. Well, that's what I mean, the Romans or anything else. You know, we've seen throughout history people try to fix this system. This system is unfixable. It has to be changed. It has to become new. It has to become something different. And until we get that in our heads and we start to serve the kingdom of God and His righteousness, we'll continue to have the virus. And it'll crop up. You know, when you put, use your computer, how do you know you got a virus? <laughs> it doesn't work right. Right? Right. And so when somebody pushes your button, you don't work right. Again, i got to keep saying this. I'm not against God navigating your life. Of course he wants to help you with certain decisions. But again, that's supposed to be added to me. That was never the design of this thing. But if you look at what's mo mostly what's being taught, listen, it's right there. The message is in there. It all comes back to be righteous so that you can have a ministry. Be righteous so that God will navigate and speak to you in this life. Make your decisions, your financial decisions, your family decisions, your life decisions. But Paul says, see, when you're engaged in warfare, how much, how much are you focused on those things? You're not. That's the point. You're trying to fight for something. You're trying to fight to defeat all of these things here. And I realize that a new car can be lust, so that's included. I'm not, dis, I'm not disincluding God navigating your life. But when it becomes about that, we're, we, yeah, we got, a, we got a me first attitude. And that's why we get set off so easily. 
Because obviously Paul, Peter, James, John, these guys that were in prison. How about this one? I've quoted this one before. This, this is in Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews said this to whoever he was writing to. For you gladly accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you had a greater treasure in heaven. In other words, their natural things were plundered. For, and they were, they, it says they gladly accepted it. You know they weren't Americans. <laughs> they gladly accepted. Now, they were, they, they were losing it for the kingdom of God, not just some robber or some thief or something like that. They were losing it for the kingdom of God. And it says knowing that you had. In other words, see, there's faith. Because they had faith in something that could not be seen. And they gave up what could be seen, and they had a glad attitude about it. So we'll fight like crazy, and that's what I mean. This was all about the whole armor of God. You can use it for that. You know, so many times we take scriptures out of context, um, and that's fine because that's the goodness of God. He made it cover a whole lot of different things, but the problem is, is we never preach the context of the scripture. You know, I, I've brought up many times where the scripture says he was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Every time I've heard that preach, it's about healing, but that's not what the context was. The context was to destroy sin. You can use it for healing. How about this? God is no respecter of persons. What have you ever heard that taught about? You get something everybody else gets? What else? Ministry? Healing? Can you use it for that? Absolutely. But what was the context? Paul was writing and said, anybody can get the revelation of who Jesus is. Man, it's not human origin, and it doesn't have to be taught by man. You can get it from the Old Testament. That's the context. So that at least needs to be preached first before we go into all the other stuff. Jesus had the whole armor of God. Did you know that? That's why he could say, forgive him for they know not what they do. Where are those people? See, that's what faith is. Because you're going somewhere you've never gone before. I mean, all we have to do is ask ourselves this. Anytime somebody makes a smart remark or, or insinuates something, do you go off the handle? That's the familiar. Next time, don't, and go somewhere you've never been before. I don't know what the reward will be. We know it's the life of God, but you can't, there's no tangible thing you can put on that. This Bible is about denying ourselves. Not denying to be, to be poor or to be sick or to be any of those kind of things. It's denying the attitudes that the world has. And that's why I was asking God, why do we have the same attitudes they have and just as bad? I mean, every time we go out there, well, where's this person? Oh, they got offended and they, they left and they go over here now. We well, got offended and they're starting their own little work over here now. Lost a fourth. <laughs> I don't get that. There's, a something, there's something wrong with that. I'm sorry, but there's something wrong with that. I mean, I know you're going to lose people. When you've got people that have been there for a long time, and then all of a sudden they get offended, what is happening? What is getting in us that's causing that when these people didn't get offended? It's kind of quiet in here. We're going, to win our, we're going to win our state. We're going to win the nation. I believe in winning people out of the city, out of that city, and into this city. That I believe in. I believe in winning people in the state. I believe in winning people in the nation. And we got a song, I think, that says, I desire to see America. Something like, what's the next verse? Something about... As a nation living for God, yeah, well, it's a nice desire, but it ain't never going to happen. 
Well, you can say, well, yeah, but with God, man, things, God, all, God, all things are possible. But Jesus said, few who find it. Jesus said, most go the way of destruction. You might be able to get your whole city in on an experience. You know, so they closed the bars down. I'm thinking, yeah, so what? Jesus was a bartender at a wedding. Well, wasn't he? People, people so want, he made it though. People so want, and he made, and not only did he make it, but it was better than anything they had. <laughs> people are so intent on trying to fix this system. You know why we had such the political fallout in the church last election? Try to guess. You shouldn't have to try to guess now. Because they're trying to fix this system. And it wouldn't have mattered if the other guy got in. It still won't be fixed. Right. May not have gone down the tubes as fast as it's going, but it wouldn't have been fixed. Amen. That's all we're trying to do is slow it down. Yes. See, I vote, but I don't serve the political system. But I vote, I work, but I don't serve the work. This has to be my priority if we want this system to be done away with. And that's what we're going after. And I don't know if I gave you everything or not, but what, did I, what else did I say? We'll just wait. <laughs> Maybe this is all we can about handle for today. Mm-hmm. Any questions? I'll let you off and we'll pick up next week maybe. Yes. I was reading in Second uh, Timothy 4 in... Uh, you read 16, I read 17. It says, um, but the Lord uh, stood by me and strengthened me so that uh, I can't read in there. Need some cheaters? No, oh. Uh, this is 17, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the gospel message may be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was delivered out of the jaws of the lion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kathy said, this is what she shared with me this morning, the good news in its entirety See, God navigating your life, that's a part. But we want the entirety of it, and we want the proper order of it. And it's good news. Yeah, it's good news. Listen, I, and I'm certainly not against speaking to everybody in the city. But how many people are going to choose God's rulership? Now, you might, be able to win them, you might be able to win them to Babylon, but are you going to really win them to have God's rulership in their life, your entire city? Well, now you're overthrowing it. I, I just believe that God's that big. Then Jesus was wrong. Sure. I'm not against speaking to people, laying hands on them, getting them healed. You know, I had a guy tell me here several weeks ago, I was really, I don't even remember this, that he used to work for Hy-Vee a long time ago, and, and I went out to do something at somebody else's house, and he was working out there. And, he had a helper, and all of a sudden he just, I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at him, and all of a sudden he turns to this helper, and he goes, this is the reason I've got Jesus as my Savior. And I said, 
What? He said, you're the reason I've got Jesus as my Savior. I said, I don't, I don't, I kind of, you know, said, he said, well, don't you remember? He said, back at the store, I had a bloody nose. And he says, you prayed for me and it stopped bleeding. And he said, that night I asked Jesus into my heart. He says, you changed my life. And I'm going, yeah, sorry, I don't remember. I couldn't remember any of that, you know. And so I'm not against speaking to people in your city. And I'm not against bringing this city into your city. But you, it's going to be very difficult to find people that really have faith for the kingdom of God. And if you focus too much on winning your city, what are you going to do? You're going to compromise and do things and mix with that city to try to win them. I guess I'm, I know it, it's a narrow message, folks. Very narrow message. And that's why he said not to engage in the affairs of this life. Why? Because then you'll end up serving them. We're after this city. Anybody else? Okay. Nothing's coming to me, so there must be more because Kathy knows it and I don't. Because I've shared a lot with her. And so this must be the end here. So, Father, once again, we thank you for this morning. And, God, we thank you that, that I'm back. <laughs> I don't know how many. Back in black, yeah. I don't know how many people are glad I'm back, but I'm glad I'm back. So, Father, we just thank you for the word that went forth this morning. Open our eyes. Show us the hidden viruses that are in the messages that we're hearing. Because, the, you know, the scripture says that men will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And Paul is writing about the church, not the worldly people. He's talking about the church. And God deceived means you think you're doing the right thing. You think that you're doing the kingdom of God thing, but you're actually doing wrong. And so, Father, let us fight for this city and let us, let us do warfare against these works of the flesh. Let us do warfare to find your rulership in our life. That's what we want. We want you to rule, not just in the church service, but when somebody's pushing our buttons, that's when we really want your rule to come forth. We wanted to learn how to deny ourselves. It says that it's, we just read, it says, those who are Christ put off these things. In other words, you're not going to do it for us. You already have. We have to put it off. And we have to recognize the minute somebody's pushing our button, that's when we want your rulership. That's when we want to deny ourselves. That's when we want to leave our familiar country and go to a place that we've never seen before. That's where faith is. Will you really find faith on the earth? God, let us be, let us be some that you can find faith in. For crying out loud. We're so fight, we fight so hard and do so much warfare against COVID and against sickness and against financial decisions, but we fight very little to put off the flesh. We're not afraid of those at all. COVID has killed far less people than offense has. And yet we're so afraid of COVID. So God, let us recognize the death and destruction that these works of the flesh bring us. And that's where we need to be fighting. That's where we need, that's where the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's where it's mighty against those things that exalt themselves against God. That's where the whole armor of God comes in. And if we fight for that and we get victory over that, all that other stuff will be added unto us. We'll know what financial decisions to make. We'll walk in health. We'll be, start to be dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Let us fight for those things. And let this not just be a message that we hear today and be a good message today and then go home and two months later, we're still letting, we're, our focus is still you navigating our life. And we've let this go and we're not fighting against these things anymore. Every one of us in here has certain things in our personalities that gets buttons pushed. You know, some people that may not have any trouble with adultery. 
or lust or things like that. But we have jealousies. We'll have contention. Let's recognize those things inside of us. And that's where we need to do the warfare. We just need you as king. And I mean literally king. Not just in verb, not just in wordage. But to actually rule over our life all the time. That's what we want. Yeah, he was the guy that had faith. Look at how many times he could have got offended. God could find faith in him, that's for sure. And we're supposed to be made in his image. We're supposed to be transformed into his image. Then let, let's start doing warfare to do that. And not, you know, not, listen, I'm not against praying for a new car or what car to buy or anything. You know that. Or what financial decision to make. But we make such warfare out of certain things, like I said, that are supposed to be added unto us. And God, we need you to be our king. Our full focus. We need this city to come. We can't love the American lifestyle so much that we want to put it off. The Bible says for us to hasten the day. Well, how can we hasten the day? By putting these things under our feet. That's why we don't have any more persecution than we do, as Bethel said. I know I'm kind of in the middle of a prayer, but I'm also still preaching. I can pray this if you want. Yes, go ahead. You, know, you can just do it however it comes. Well, um, you know, I love what you said about these things are to be added to us and that that's not the goal of what we're going after. And I think about like when Jesus was talking about the birds and the lilies of the field and where he's like, they don't worry about where they're going to live or how they're going to be dressed. And the thing is, is like our, war share, our warfare should be against the um, why aren't we trusting God or and against the unbelief on the inside of us? That's the warfare. It's not the warfare to get these things or to um, attain these things. And like, you know, most people don't wake up every day and think about their heart beating. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Most people don't wake up every day and wonder if they're going to breathe. Most people don't, you know, if they're going to breathe another day. And it's kind of like we're making these minor things, I mean, that are really minor compared to the kingdom of God, right. we're making those the major things, even though they're important. It's important to breathe. It's important for your heart to beat. Sure. But it's like these are things that are being added unto us as we take care of our body, as we live our lives. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And it's like I love that it's just this tweak because God's not taking away. No. He's not no. saying, no, I don't want you healed and I don't no, want you absolutely it's, not. It's just tweaking it where our focus is in a different place. And these things, it's like goodness and mercy are supposed to be changed chasing us yeah. you know I mean, I mean they are but like we're too busy chasing after that kind of stuff instead of we're, we're chasing and we're warring on the wrong things and i just i love this it's just that little tweak where god's like the, you've got like the ingredients they're just kind of mixed up and yeah. he's tweaking yeah. it, it needs to be, yeah, that's exactly right it needs to be placed in order the proper order so i'm not taking anything away from from any of those things that that people go after God for. I'm saying I'm trying to put them in order. See? And we have to go after the city. And see, this is why so many people get offended at God is because they're told, and God does want to heal them, but we're not getting healed. See? You know why? Because we're not fighting for the right thing. We're fighting for healing. We're not fighting for righteousness. We're not fighting for righteousness. We're fighting... Let me put it this way. We're fighting more for healing than we are for righteousness. It's not that important because we can't see the reward of righteousness. I can see the reward of healing. How many of you have ever been health, healthy before? So you know what that is. So when you're sick, you've got something tangible to go after. But when you put these things under your feet, all you have is the trust of God that there's going to be a life in you doing what going someplace where you've never been before. That's all you have is the trust. And that's why he says, will he really find faith on the earth? Because you can't find many people that will put their trust in him and lay down and deny themselves these works of the flesh. Quiet. Wait, do you have something? I was just thinking of the scripture that in all things he is to have preeminence yeah. because he is to be 
and everything else will come underneath. He is to have preeminence. He is to have the supreme authority right. in our lives because that's what a king is. See? And, you and live or you die by his decree. That, that, and that's a good scripture. He wants the preeminence in how much? All things. All right. That means he wants things. as much preeminence in your offense as he does in your health. But that's not what we're doing. He wants as much uh, preeminence in your jealousy as he does in your finances. Thank you. Well, how do you know I was going to? You guys are just like, it's, that really helps me a lot. Yeah, boy, it just left me. Yeah, he wants as much preeminence in that. And when we're fighting for preeminence in our finances and our health, more than we are in our offense and our jealousies and competition and all those things that we read in here, when we're fighting more for that, you're already in Babylon. You've already got it out of order. You've already put man first because finances, that's man's stuff. Health, is that man's stuff? Yeah. Because health wouldn't be an issue if we had perfection, would it? You wouldn't know what sickness is. Sickness is man's stuff. And we're putting our more into that than we are. And listen to the testimonies, that'll tell you. It's always how God's navigating my life. Okay, Sherry. Did you have anything else, Kathy? I, re I interrupted you? Yeah. Ah, sorry, hon. I thought you were done. A lot of times when people are quoting that scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God, that's where they stop. They go, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all mm -hmm. these things will be added unto you. No, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm -hmm. and all these things will be added unto right. you. So it's his righteousness. It's like you said, it's overcoming all of those other things, and then everything else comes behind it. It just, it just, you know, it just hit me when we were gone, as, especially going to another church and, and then also being around people, you know, in motels and things like that and thinking of, of the past year and a half since this COVID thing has hit, how much fear it has put into people. And people are terrified of it. And I'm thinking, you're terrified of that, but you're not terrified of being offended. I don't get that. See, those are people that are in, those are people who have a, a man-centered mindset. And I'm talking about church people. These are people that go to church. You're more afraid of COVID than you are being afraid. You're more afraid of COVID than those works of the flesh. If we could, if we could get rid of those, you wouldn't, COVID would be no problem. Then the plague wouldn't come near us. So we use God to try to fight against these different things that come against what we can see instead of fighting for the things we can see. You see what I mean? I'm not against, look, look, again, don't hear what I'm not saying. It, 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 there's nothing wrong with praying for healing or for, for against sickness or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. What I'm saying is, is why is it so much more important with sickness than it is with offense? Because pe yeah, our attitudes, people get, get, get offended in anything, and they act like it's okay. They act like they're not losing anything. I don't get that. I don't get that. It's going, to, it's going to be costly. Like I said in my prayer, it, it, far more people have died from being offended than by COVID will ever kill. Yet we're not afraid of that. Amen. <laughs> Father, anybody else? We just thank you, God. You didn't get anything? You didn't, that didn't come back to you? About the preeminence? That's where you were. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just saw that in Abraham. Noah did the same thing, and Abel did. The, you know, Abel gave an offering of his first fruits. What reward was there? I mean, what reward? In, what, in other words, did, did he give that so that God would give him a hundredfold return? No. He blesses his business. It blesses his flocks. He just gave it because of who God was. See, and that is the. Um, that's where we're missing it. 
You know, it's almost like we have to have a reward. I mean, even, even when you see people on TV when they're going to give you something, they always got to give you some nightlight or some angel thing or some, you know, book or something like that to give you a reward or people won't give. We've trained people now to think that God has to give me a reward or he's not worth serving. That's what we've tra- that's, that's the virus embedded in the message. You're training people in those practices. We give because he's worthy. He's the creator of the universe. He created me and you. Does he reward? Yeah. I'm not taken away from that. But don't train people that that's the reason to give for him. Or give to him, yeah. Scripture I use all the time. God said to Abraham, you know, he promised him a son and you will be a father of many nations. But later, what did he say to him? He said, I am your shield of protection and I am your exceeding great reward. In other words, he was pulling Abraham's eyes off of the promise of the son which wasn't going to come for another like 25 years or whatever, long time. But he said, I am your exceeding great reward. And Abraham is the father of the faith. It says it even in the scriptures. So that's what we're to look at, not the promise of our sons as far as whether physical sons, spiritual sons, ministry, whatever. But God alone is our exceeding great reward, and he is our protection. And we're to dwell in that secret place with him in the most high. And other things will come, but they will be secondary. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we're to be looking. Like you said, Abraham left everything he knew because mm-hmm. God told him, mm-hmm. go. And he said, I am your exceeding great reward. And somewhere he got that partway in and started leaving and following and looking for this city mm-hmm. whose maker and builder yeah. was God. And so, as the father of our faith, we are to lift up our eyes. Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody wins. Nobody fails. Who do you think loose that on the earth? Church did. Everybody's saved. Everybody's going to heaven. Everyone's a child of God. That's why we now have everybody gets a trophy. Nobody fails. Everybody's a winner. In reality, what's the truth of that? <laughs> Somebody comes in last. <laughs> Somebody fails. But we're not. But we're going to give everybody a, tro- a participation trophy. That, that, where do you think that came from? That's just about what the church has, has produced. It's people you go to church, so you get a participation trophy. And you have nothing to win. You haven't. Pro- you haven't yeah, I know, but you haven't participated in anything other than to show up, and that's what they get a lot of times. Get a trophy for just to show up. Just be on the roll. You get a trophy. Yeah, we had a guy that did that. You know that? He never came to church, but when his 50 years was up, when his 50 year pin, he came to church and got his 50. They gave him his 50 year pin. Yeah, he never came to church. He was never there the whole time I was there. But he came on his 50th when he got 50 years because he wanted to get that pin. And what do you think we've loosed on the earth? Yeah, boy, no kidding. See, the voice of the bride and the bridegroom. See, this is what gets us, is in Babylon. That's, that's tricky because we can be in Babylon. We're still hearing the voice of the bride and the bridegroom. But there's going to come a time when that voice won't be heard anymore because God, Jesus said it. He said the voice of the bride and the bridegroom will no longer be heard in you anymore. So evidently it's being heard in her right now. And it's because we hear his voice of the bride and the bridegroom, we think, that we, well, then Babylon is God. It's the focal point of what we're focused on, folks. It's where, what are you serving? You can only serve one master. Are you serving this city? 
or that city. I hope it's at least halfway clear. It's probably everything I've preached before, but yeah, it is. I know. It's just a different way of saying it. It's just that I was asking, huh? Yeah, I know, and and uh, the other people aren't either. <laughs> We're not walking it, and uh, that's why I was asking God, what what is causing this? Uh, and he, that's what the illustration he gave me was: is there's a virus in that message that we're unaware of, that's affecting us and creating us to not work correctly. <laughs> Just a little bit of uh, warning, tweaking, whatever. <clears throat> Listen, you know, we all have our favorite ministers, one, two, three, six, we watch online or whatever. Listen to what they say and take heed. The warning is don't look at them like, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. they don't know. Now we know, and they're all teaching error. You ask God, open up their eyes. They love you. They're walking with you. This little piece right over here, they've not seen yet. They don't know. God, open up their eyes because these people have a voice to the nations. Yeah. And we are called to pray. You know that in this church. So as you listen to the people you love, be aware and be praying, God, this virus, let me see it and push against that in my life. But, God, I'm asking that you open up their eyes and open up their heart so that they let that go. And you remember in Revelation he says, he says, rejoice, you prophets and apostles, because Babylon is falling. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're called to do is tear down Babylon, expose it, seed the heavenly so we can get rid of it. And in this present evil age, which is Babylon, it is. Yep. That's what this present evil age that's is. It. It's Babylon. Mm-hmm. Spirituality, God mixing with the demonic and man, into man. And that's why Jesus said, I've come and I've laid the axe to the root of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm-hmm. He laid axe to that because that is Babylon. No, I, got, I had a couple things, but I forgot them. Boy, they just go in and out of your head like, like, geez, it's just terrible. Um, well, just to, yeah, I just have to let it go because I, I don't think it's going to come back. It got pretty close there while you were talking, but then it left because I was listening. I was listening to what you said, and uh, anyway, um, like I said, it's it's basically the same thing. I'm just saying it again in a different way. And, yeah, it is stronger. You know, I've spoke against some things that probably a lot of people think are um, sacred cows. You know, when in your city. You know, um, I guess I couldn't say God couldn't do that. But the way I see people trying to win their city, not going to happen. Not that way. looks good and it sounds good and that's see oh that's what it was thank you what does a virus in your computer do infects but what what's it what's it designed for what's it trying what's it trying to do what it does what it takes information isn't that what most of them do is they take information because what are they trying to take from you are they are they trying to take something from you what your identity your credit card numbers, trying to take your finances. <laughs> your social security number. Your pictures, your memory, mm-hmm. so that somebody else can use it. Good illustration, isn't it? But that's what's in that message. So be careful, okay? What? 
Ja. 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 Better get some virus protection. And it's like on a computer, I guess in the old days, because I, I have a different computer, but anyway, where if a virus or suspected virus, it would come, wah, 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 you know? And it's like, we should, we should be praying for that discernment of wah, 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 yeah. for that discern, you know, that virus. Mm -hmm. What's the antivirus? There you go. <laughs> Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Get your antivirus on, folks. Because many times we open ourselves up and we don't realize because, you know, like Kathy said, these people, look, I'm not preaching these things because I think people, everybody's out to get you. A lot of them are, but no, I think there's some good people out there. They just haven't seen that this city can be brought into this life. They're still looking, they're still thinking that navigating, God navigating, that he's to do that until he brings the city. See? But we know we can bring it now. And so I'm teaching this as a forerunner to what's going to be coming. This message will be common. It's the new era. It'll be, yeah, it's the new era. It'll be common. People will fight against it now. They'll criticize me, write letters about me, threaten me, kill me, blah, 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 blah. But this will be in 20, 10, 20, 30 years, this is where we're headed. You know, and I'm not saying I'm the only forerunner. There's probably other people that are preaching this, I hope, that are preaching this as well. And it's going to become mainstream. Wait and see. Then wait and see. It's coming. Yeah, new era, old one dies. Screaming. Thank you, Father. Amen. What? If you're on the right side of it, it is. Exciting. It is. It absolutely is. I can see it going in some of your eyes. I mean, I know it's 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 life to you because I I I keep this is the most difficult thing for me because like I was telling Kathy, huh? I don't know. It's counterculture. I'm always counterculture. That's what makes it so difficult on me. You know, if I was preaching culture, great. But it's counterculture. And so it's always good to see a group of people, when it goes in their eyes, they're recognizing what I'm saying. That I'm not dissing the people in this system or the ministers. Some I do because I think some are crooks, but I don't think all of them are. But I, and I'm not dissing healing. I'm not dissing God. Of course he wants to help you with your car and your finance. He doesn't want you to make the wrong decision. Come on. He's good in everything. But I want to go beyond that and put that on the, that's added to me. Thank you, God, that that's added to me. This is what I want to fight for now. I want to get rid of these attitudes that I've got. And I want to do warfare with them. I want to defeat those demons. And then the demons of COVID have, oh, it's you? Oh, that's what it'll be. You clean out the temple. Okay. Is that off? No. no? Please take it off.